So for this video, we're gonna look at off Amazon traffic via Pinterest, which is really fantastic for aesthetic driven, more female oriented niches. So a lot of home goods brands, food brands, apparel brands, etc., are fantastic on Pinterest. You can even see sports and niches like golf starting to take off as well. So I'd recommend testing it if you've got a passion-based niche or you've got an isolated customer archetype and see if Pinterest is a fit for you. Frankly, my strategy has not deviated at all from a video I posted publicly on YouTube. So I'm gonna copy that one in here and you can watch this one. We are gonna create a guru card on this. So it's got some reference step-by-step -step instructions there for you. Hope you guys dig it. I have got some great news and I've got some bad news. The great news, Amazon loves and rewards with ranking products on Amazon that bring in external traffic. The bad news, most Amazon sellers aren't doing it. They don't know how to do it. They're afraid to do it. In this video today, I'm breaking down one of the best and one of my favorite external traffic sources, Pinterest ads. Where you can use these to launch your products, to rank your products, or for ongoing maintenance to drive additional sales from external traffic to your Amazon products. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial where I'm gonna break down why you should use Pinterest ads, how you should use them, how you should track them, and how you can implement them today into your Amazon business. Let's do this. I've built and led multiple seven-figure Amazon brands. Now, I'm setting out to share how I did it with radically transparent and detailed weekly videos. Join the journey with me and break free. Welcome to Heist. Welcome back to Heist, the Amazon channel that is all things FBA, dropping value bombs that most gurus charge thousands of dollars for, but we do it for free. So if you're here for the first time or you're here and you have yet to subscribe, hit that button, Hit that bell because we bring the heat and we're doing that today with this deep dive on Pinterest ads. Pinterest ads has become one of my favorite external traffic sources. It's a little tricky to figure out and set up, which is why most people don't do it. But I, trust me, it's easy. And in this tutorial today, we will do a step-by-step easy to implement approach so you can get Pinterest ads going for your brand and Amazon business today. Let's step into my computer and we'll walk through this step by step. Okay, so let's dive in and look at why we should do Pinterest ads to begin with. So first of all, there's three different use cases that I've used Pinterest ads for. One of the most popular and probably the most likely for most people to use is for launches. The second is for ranking. So if you've got an existing product that's been around maybe for a while and you wanna inject some juice into it for ranking, you can do it for that. And then the third is if you want to kind of have a small budget and drip some external traffic consistently in an ongoing basis, you can do that as well. The key point here, and this is the same as my Google ads video tutorial, which I'll leave a link for up above, is there's a common myth within the Amazon space that driving external traffic is bad because the conversion rates are so much lower. Well, first of all, the conversion rates are lower. But the fact that Amazon gives credit, and I've seen it with the backend data, for external traffic supersedes the lower conversion rate. So don't let lower conversion rates scare you with these external ads. In terms of the pros for Pinterest ads, similar to Google ads or any other external traffic, Google loves and rewards external traffic and specifically external ad traffic to its platform. This makes sense, right? I mean, you're taking a customer that wasn't shopping on Amazon, you're bringing them to Amazon with the chance for them to purchase either your product or other products on Amazon or to get retargeted by Amazon. So they like it. Second, similar to Google ads and Amazon, you've got customers with buying intent. It doesn't seem like Pinterest is a place for people to shop, but believe it or not, close to half of the people on Pinterest are seeking out products while they're doing their browsing and searching on Pinterest. So they're looking for ideas, they're looking for things to buy. And you can tap into this captive audience and convert them using your Amazon product. Related to this, people are seeking solutions and products when they're on Pinterest. There's a lot of how-to, there's a lot of tutorial, 
there's a lot of information seeking and product seeking related to niches that customers are looking for. This is really powerful stuff if you're trying to convert people from ads. One of the biggest things with Pinterest that sets it apart from even Amazon ads, Google ads, and some of the YouTube ads is its evergreen content. What I mean by that is you are promoting posts on the Pinterest platform. You're not just serving up ads. So said another way, your pin or your ad in the case of Pinterest will live on even after you turn your ads off. So it will be searchable, additional customers will come across it, and the potential audience and prospects for your products will grow over time even when you're not running ads. That's truly powerful and stretches the impact of the investment of Pinterest ads. Also, I love Pinterest ads for my home goods brand. It's a female-centric brand, and the female audience within Pinterest, as you can imagine, is really, really strong. Your wives, your girlfriends, your females in your life probably love and live on Pinterest because it's got awesome content catered to women specifically. doesn't mean that men don't shop on there. You can certainly target men as well. But if you've got a brand or a product centric to the female audience, Pinterest is a powerful platform for that. It's also great for passion niches. Um, a lot of people are browsing on Pinterest for things that they love, things that they care about, things that they enjoy spending their personal disposable income on. And you can tap into that, especially if you've got a brand catered towards a passion niche. And then finally, they work. I've seen it work for launches. I've seen it work for re-ranking. And I've seen it work to continually spur traffic and sales to Amazon listings. Like anything that's great, there's um, imperfections and there certainly is with Pinterest ads as well. So some of the cons, first of all, strong images and or video creative are required to do well. If you just throw up a crappy image without a lot of compelling visual content, it's unlikely to work effectively on the Pinterest platform. It is a visual collage of products, ideas, and images. And so you've got to tap into that with high quality images yourself for this to be effective. Similar to any really external traffic source that you're driving to Amazon, the attribution and determining what ad volume and spend turned into sales is tremendously difficult. I think this is going to change over the next six to 12 months as Amazon steps up its attribution data. However, at this point, it's very difficult to attribute direct sales from clicks from Pinterest ads. There's also lower conversion than Amazon. So if your product is converting at 15, 20% on Amazon based searches or Amazon based pay per click, you cannot count on that with Pinterest. There's just too many variables. The user experience coming from an external platform to Amazon, they may not be ready to pull the trigger in the same way that somebody searching on Amazon is. So you can expect lower conversion rates. And then finally, I don't think this is great for generic products. If you've just got a run of the mill, garlic press or spatula or something that is very commodity based i don't think it's going to do well again because it's for passion based interests it is for visually stunning and visually compelling products and i think that you lose a little bit of that benefit if it's a generic commodity based product so key points and this is very similar to most external traffic that you drive outside of amazon first don't be scared of something new Yes, it's a little weird when you first set it up, but I promise you, especially following the step-by-step -step process I'm going to walk through, this stuff is not rocket science and you can figure it out. Also, don't be afraid if you're not perfect at it. I am not a Pinterest ads expert. You might have Pinterest ad agencies that look at this video and think I'm the village idiot. That's okay. You just need to know enough to be dangerous, to execute a simplistic, tangible, directionally effective ad. And that's what we're going to break down today. All right. So the strategy here, you're taking external shopping or product discovery traffic, which is more than or close to half of the traffic on Pinterest. And we're driving that and feeding the Amazon algorithm with visits to our product page and ultimately sales to our product page. This will drive rank. And you're also going to create evergreen content within the Pinterest platform, even when you turn your ads off, that will continue over time 
to generate traffic and sales to your Amazon listing. There's a couple of ways to do this. First, and the way that we're gonna uncover today for the most part is driving direct traffic from the Pinterest pin or promoted pin to your Amazon listing. It is clean, it gets the job done, and it sends the signals that Amazon likes to improve rank. You can also do more complex landing pages in between. So you can take your Pinterest pin ad, take it to a landing page, and then take it to Amazon. Totally viable approach, but due to the complexity and some of the fallout, um, we're focusing on the simple get it done approach, which is the direct approach today. So this is the nitty gritty guys, get your notepads out, walk through this step by step and actually do this live. You can literally do it live with me as we run through this. It's not complex, it's an 11 step process that I've broken down each element of it and the core parts of what you need to do to effectively execute this for your Amazon brand. First, you're gonna to need to set up the account and the basis of your Pinterest account before we get started. You're gonna to wanna to set up a business account given that we're going to be driving ads from our pins within Pinterest. To do this, go to business.pinterest.com. You'll see a landing page similar to this. The colors and imagery might change from time to time, but you'll either click the sign up button here or the one in the top right. That's gonna take you to a simple fill out your email and uh, password that you wanna use, create your account. I would use your email for your actual brand. So if it's like a support or help email, I would use that just so that multiple people, whether it's your VAs or other people on your team can have access to it over time if needed. You're then gonna wanna set up your profile. Pretty simple stuff here. Don't use your LLC, especially if that's different from your brand on Amazon. The business name you wanna use here is the brand as it would appear on Amazon. So don't need to throw an LLC. If it's a holding company, don't put that in there. This is the one that you want customers to see from the ad. So make it align and mirror what you have on Amazon. If you've got a website, throw your URL on there and select your region as well. For the region, however, if you're say based in Australia or the UK, I would say US if that's the primary marketplace that you're gonna be selling in just to keep things simple. Next, you're gonna to need to describe your brand, so pick the category that best describes what your brand is. And then finally, you need to select what your brand is all about. And there's a bunch of choices here. The one that you're gonna to wanna to select as an Amazon seller is this online retail or marketplace. It's kind of the best descriptor for what we do. And then it's gonna ask you uh, where you sell your products. Um, if you do have a Shopify page, you can select this, although they really wanna kind of make you plug in your feed from your Shopify store and some other complex things. I would recommend to start out, just click the something else button here and we'll, we'll go that route. And then it's gonna ask if you're interested in advertising, I would say select yes on here. It's gonna take you to this form where you put in your name and your number. Somebody from the Pinterest ads team is gonna to wanna to reach out to you and set up a call to basically run through how to use it and ultimately upsell you on, on spending more money on the ads platform. You don't need to necessarily take the call. However, one thing that I like to do when they reach out to set up a meeting is to request ad credit. And they can and will do that, not in all cases, but they do definitely give you ad credit. So I select that, yes, I'm gonna advertise and I put my name and info in here. And then I just hit up the salesperson to give me an ad credit and it usually works. The next is where you wanna start. Um, although there's an ad selection here, we're not gonna get into that just yet. We wanna make sure that the profile with which we're gonna be delivering our ads from, as well as the pins and boards within the Pinterest platform are a little bit fleshed out, just so it seems more natural for people that check out our profile, that check out our boards, and that maybe follow up from the ad pin to our actual Pinterest profile. So we're gonna select that bottom part, which is showcase your brand. From here, you want your display name. Again, make this mirror your Amazon brand. And then it's gonna ask for a username, which is the URL that you can send for people to go visit your actual Pinterest profile. So it would be pinterest.com slash brand X as an example. And so make sure that you keep that defined in terms of what you want customers to see within the Pinterest platform. Then there's this little button right here, which gives you an opportunity to leave a photo. If you wanna create something really simple, um, if you've got a really intricate logo, it's probably not best for this because it's super small, it's more of an icon. So I'd recommend using an icon or something more, a, a more simple version of your logo here. 
To create that, uh, I use Canva for most of my graphics, and it's just a 600 by 600 pixel graphic that you're gonna wanna create. And then you can just change that photo and set that up so there's something visual there that's not just the default setting on that. Then after you set that up, I would go to this claim section. If you've got a website, you can do this claim. Um, you have to put a snippet of code in your Shopify page. If you search on YouTube, there's other ways for you to do that. I wouldn't worry about that right now, um, but you definitely may want to do that over time. And then if you've got an Instagram account or some of these other things, you may want to claim those just so that those are associated with your Pinterest account and no one else claims those. And then you're going to want to create some pins. So you've got your profile set up, you've got your image, you're ready to rock and roll. The problem is, is that ads within Pinterest require a pin. So you've actually got to create something that resides within your profile that you then promote. So we've got to create something. What I also like to do before I get into the ad stage, however, is create some content so that the boards and the profile within Pinterest are more than just a single ad. So that it looks a little bit more legit, it looks like you're a participant within the Pinterest platform, and it legitimizes the discovery of your brand and products when you've got more content there than just a single ad. So I like to do like five to 20 pins to start, just to create some baseline content. I also like to create some boards, which we'll get into in a second. So to start off, let's just kind of create a handful of them. Uh, again, I use Canva for, I would say 95% of the graphics that are a part of all of my Amazon brands. Any of the graphics you see here on this channel are done in Canva. It's a super user-friendly, non-graphic design-friendly platform for you to create graphics. Um, I've got a link here. It's uh, bit.ly slash Canva heist. So you can go through that. Gives me some coffee money because I love coffee. Um, or you could go through on your own and I'll just cry myself to sleep tonight. But if you don't have Canva, that's a link you can do that. Or you can just go direct and hurt my feelings. Um, so what you're going to want to do for pens, it's kind of unique dimensions. It's 1,000 pixels by 1,500 pixels. So if you want to go to create a design, you can kind of start from scratch there. There's also some cool templates, which is another cool element of Canva. Um, they've got Pinterest templates. So if you come down to the templates here and then go down to the Pinterest graphic, it's gonna open this up and it's gonna give you a whole bunch of like preset graphics that you can plug your own product imagery into. You can tweak colors. And a lot of the graphic work is done for you. You just need to tweak a couple things uh, on your own. So you can use that as well. A couple examples. So like this is like an existing graphic. I'm gonna use a, a gardening example just because it's simple and I've used it in other videos here on the channel. But this is like a go green or go home um, thing that I put in here so you could do a graphic like that. I could also search within the photo section of Canva and just type in gardening as an example. It's gonna have a whole bunch of images here and then I can throw that up here and say, put in my own um, copy here which is like garden ready, right? Other things that you can use if you don't find the image that you want within the Canva photos especially the free Canva photos, as you can go to free stock photography. Unsplash is a good one that I use, as well as Pixels. So both of those you can type in lifestyle imagery and use those as the backdrop for pins that you can create as you want to kind of build and cultivate some imagery for your brand that's not necessarily photos of your listing and photos of your product. So that's it. So you just create some pins, you go to add, um, and then it's gonna have this whole thing which explains how what pins are. You can hit the next button on that. And then it's gonna pop up this wizard which will show you how to create a pin. If you're using an ad, I'll break down some of the elements that you wanna include here just so we can kinda of keep that in mind. But you can just drag and drop the photo that you created within Canva into this imagery section. It's gonna drop it in there. There's a section for title. For the title, I recommend that you use Pinterest search terms We'll get into that when creating the ad here in a little bit on what those search terms might be. But those could be some keyword rich things that people are seeking out on Pinterest. So you may even want to go in there and type a couple things related to your niche or related to the product or an idea that you want to promote and just see what other people are searching for and what other good products are that are showing up or other good pins are that are showing up and look at those titles, share some of those keywords that you think make sense and plug those in here. There's also a relatively large description section that you can throw down here for an ad, a couple things that I like to put in here. You can use hashtags, which make these more searchable organically. 
um, and evergreen content within the Pinterest platform. You can also throw in relevant keywords. So if I'm selling a gardening tool bag, I can throw in gardening tool bag related keywords that I think are impactful and searchable and relevant to my product. If you're doing ads, I would also recommend throwing the price in there. Similar to the Google ads, it's good if people know, since you're paying per click, what the price is, especially if it's in shopping mode. So if you've got something that's 75 bucks and there's people that are looking for something that's 30 bucks, they won't click on your ad and waste your ad spend because they're not gonna convert anyway. So you wanna somewhat pre-qualify people. Putting the price in this description helps do that. And you may wanna do it near the front so it's more vis visual above the fold. I would also say here, anything goes related to sales. So use this as an opportunity to promote with emotional language, ideally that ties to the imagery and photo so that you're selling why this product and why this ad is something that they should take action on. And then finally, there's a URL link at the bottom. Personally, I like to just use direct links to my direct Amazon listing or I can use the Helium 10 Gems canonical URLs, which tend to work really well. What I'm stepping away from and wouldn't recommend is the Pixelfy links. There's some trackability within the Amazon platform that can track Pixelfy links, so I think there's some danger and risk to it now. And it, you can hide the Pixelfy link, but I think it takes away the benefit of the external traffic and the external tags that Pinterest would get. Uh, and you kind of wipe that away. So I like to just do a direct link or a Helium 10 Gems so that we're getting the credit for this traffic coming from not only an external traffic source, but an external ad from Pinterest. So that's what I would recommend doing. And then you just hit the publish um, and you can create a board here. Um, usually for my ads or my product specific elements uh, and pins, I'll just create something related to my brand. So let's say I'm like gardening ink, right? I would put like a gardening ink board as an example and just have all of my pins in that. So you can create a board that this will show up on. And then I would rinse and repeat on this one. So get, you know, five to 20 of these, get some ideas. Some of them could be lifestyle, some of them can be your product. But the idea here is you want to fill out your profile with multiple pins so that you seem like you're a broader participant in the Pinterest platform and you don't just have the single ad, which might be a little bit funky and might hurt your conversion rates. The other thing I like to do is create a board unrelated to my products. There is a lot of people seeking out niche specific how to's, tutorials, and other things unrelated to your brand that you can capitalize on and repin other people's stuff. Um, so that if they come through your ad and they say wanna click on your brand and see what you're all about, they'll see you understand the niche and that you've got other content that's not just hawking your own products. So as an example, Gardeners build greenhouses, right? And so there's tons of pins on the platform about how to build a greenhouse. You could create your own board and then pin within your board other th content related to how to build a greenhouse. You could have how to set up a flower bed. There's a, you know best gifts for gardeners. There's all kinds of different things that you could create pins for that aren't just your brand and product, again, to legitimize the content within the platform and help your conversion rate and the long-term followers and clicks that your brand can get through the Pinterest platform. So this is something I don't see a lot of people recommend, but I definitely recommend building this content out. It takes 15, 20 minutes to do all this stuff. It's not crazy, but that investment could be really fruitful in the months and years ahead for your Pinterest account. So that is the account set up. Now let's run some freaking ads. That's why we're here. So to create a campaign, step five, pretty simple. You go to the create drop down, and then I go to create campaign. You can do the quick ad as well, but uh, campaign's a little bit more in depth and I prefer creating a campaign. From that, there's a whole lot of selections like a lot of these platforms. If you remember from the Google ads tutorial, very similar setup. The one difference is, is that you cannot click on conversions unless you've got your Shopify page uh, set up and you're driving this traffic to an e-commerce site. So this will not work with Amazon. I put a little Shopify logo here and maybe I'll do a video in the future on how to do this if you've got an e-commerce brand. But for the purposes of driving Amazon traffic, we're actually gonna be selecting the traffic icon and these ones over here won't work, so don't try to. I like to name them. So here I've got like gardening tools and then traffic. You could have a launch thing here. You could have an ongoing. You can kind of have your own naming convention, but you definitely want to name the campaign so that if you're running multiple ones over time, you can kind of differentiate what this particular campaign is all about. 
After you've created the campaign, you wanna create the ad group. Again, you can rename this here. I didn't do it for this, this video, but you can definitely rename this if you'd like. Um, the first thing that you can do is select a, a create a new audience section, or you could go to the interest section. I'll just start off real quick. This is more for future stuff, so you're not gonna do this when you first create a, a Pinterest ad, but you can do it later. If you've got people that have visited your boards, visited your pins, say over the last couple months or last six months, you can target those people with ads in the future. So one strategy you can do if you've got a, a Pinterest account that's been around for a while is retarget those customers with ads. So I just wanted to plug that in here. If you click that button, that's what this will do. Not gonna do it for this purpose though. What we are gonna do is add some interests. I recommend just typing in a descriptive kind of niche character for the particular product or brand that you're looking to promote. In this case, it's gardening even though it might be a gardening bag or gardening tool set, I'm targeting people within that niche. If it's a bowling product you're doing, type in bowling, right? Like get, get descriptive. If you've got something that's a little bit not definitive for a particular category, let's say you're selling a, a spatula as an example, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend for Pinterest, but you may wanna go into like kitchen or foodies or chef or recipes, there's other elements there that you might wanna find, but but you wanna to try to find an interest or interests that are closely related to the product that you're looking to promote within Pinterest. So when I type in gardening, I could basically select all these things here and they're pretty relevant. So uh, step seven is adding the interests. Then you wanna add keywords, and this is very similar to the Google Ads tutorial that we did last time, and it's gonna break down the, the keywords that customers are typing in within the Pinterest platform. You can supersede them and promote your pin when people type those things in. So I like to just kind of get really descriptive about what a relevant name for my product is, type that in and just see what shows up here, and then I'll add those in, the ones that are relevant, that I think would convert well for people um, typing these in on Pinterest, and I'll add this to this keyword bucket here. I also like to take the keyword deep dive analysis that I did in my own Amazon brand at launch and plug those in as well. They may not get a ton of impressions or clicks, but they're relevant to my product, so I'll take those hyper-relevant words from my keyword analysis that I'm actually looking to rank for as well on Amazon, and I'll include those here as well. Key point. Very, very similar, uh, in fact, exactly the same as Google Ads. You've gotta have brackets around your keyword if you want it to be an exact match term that you're bidding on. So if you don't put those brackets in, Pinterest is gonna go to town, the computer's taking over, the algorithm's gonna run the show, and it's gonna do a lot of broad match or phrase match terms that may not actually be relevant to your product, and it's gonna burn money, it's gonna burn your budget, and it's not gonna be as effective of a campaign as if you get really hyper-focused on it. So I like to take that initial swath that I added in, as well as my keyword deep dive from the Amazon launch, plug those all in to a Google Sheets page, and then create the brackets within Google Sheets, and then copy those in to this section here um, within the keyword section. How you do this, pretty simple. I create just a column beside it, and then I create a bracket up here, and then a close bracket up here, and then you just take um, this exact formula as it appears up here, and then it'll auto, once I drag this down, it'll basically auto add the brackets for everything that's in this column A. Simple little hack and trick that will save you a ton of time, especially if you've got a lot of keywords that you're putting in here. If you want to, by the way, you don't have to dump all your keywords in, you can split these up. So say you've got a couple words that you really wanna focus on or a couple interests that you really wanna focus on, you can do multiple, multiple campaigns. I know people that do 10, 20 campaigns for a single product. This use case, we're just gonna do a simple single campaign approach, which is pretty effective, frankly, for launch if you want to. But if you wanna distribute your budget, similar to Amazon pay-per-click, I would recommend chopping this list up and having multiple ad groups so that you're targeting and spreading the budget evenly across these terms. Next step is to add demographics, and you can leave this as is, or you can add some tweaks to it. For my home goods brand, because it's a much more female-centric customer archetype, I typically deselect the male and deselect the unspecified and just keep that as female. You can keep all genders if you want, even the unspecified ones, but uh, you can also hone this in if you have a really clean idea on who your customer is. 
Also the same thing with age. It's going to select all of these age groups. Uh, I typically drop the 18 to 24 just because they tend to have less disposable income and they're more there for the pins and the visuals and they're less likely to convert. You might have certain products. Let's say it's a gaming product or something like that that you actually might want to select this, this age group. But generally speaking, I deselect the 18 to 24. Sometimes I'll even uh, deselect the geezers. No offense to folks that are 65 plus on the channel. Love you guys if you're still rocking it on Amazon. It'd be cool to chime in on the comments if you are over 65 and rocking Amazon. But um, but sometimes I'll deselect those just because I, I you know maybe confusing to pop them from Pinterest to Amazon and to all the stuff. You might kind of just see reduced conversion rates. But this is a, a age group selection. And then it's got the locations here. This is why it's important up front when you're setting up your account to define where your brand is going to be selling, not necessarily where you live. If you're Australia, this might show up as Australia and kind of mess this all up. So um, in this case, it's pre-selected as all U.S. locations. I usually leave it at that. Stay tuned here in a little bit. I'll get into a pro tip on how you can use some geotargeting to make this more effective. Um, I keep all languages and then all devices. But if you want to get cute and do Android only users or other things like if they're only in an iPad, you can certainly do that as well. Ad placement, uh, I generally select all here. The browse and search uh, hits both of them. Um, there's one thing here that this is pre-selected, the user pin to expand your targeting. Again, if you keep that pre-selected, the algorithm is going to take over and it's probably going to start burning your budget. It's going to kind of take liberties beyond what you prescribe in your own criteria here. And it's going to serve up ads to people that may not be relevant, that may burn some of your budget in clicks. So I deselect that personally. You can leave it on if you want. Um, but I, I like to kind of have a little bit more control and not let the, the machine take over, so to speak. Step nine is budgeting and scheduling. It kind of depends on how many of these campaigns you're doing. If you're, say, doing, I want to do like five to ten campaigns that are hyper-targeted on different interests and different keywords, you probably want to do something more like ten bucks a day. If you're doing a one kind of massive launch campaign, you might want to do like 40, 50 bucks a day. So it kind of depends, again, on your budget, how you're setting up your campaigns and how many you're running and what you want to kind of do here. Kick the tires, just kind of general, let's see how this thing works. I'd recommend 20 bucks a day and just see how it goes from there. And you can kind of trim up or trim down depending on your appetite. And then you can also define the dates. So say I'm just doing this for a launch and I want like a 10 day spike. I can kind of predefine this. I can keep it ongoing. I can set a lifetime budget. There's a lot of different things that you can do. But generally speaking, I just set a daily budget and then I'll set the timeline for a launch. Or if it's an ongoing one, I'll just do a really slim budget, say like five bucks a day, and I'll just let it run out in perpetuity. The bidding strategy, kind of similar to Google ads, you can kind of go automatic on this. And Pinterest will try to figure out what the best bid amount is for different things and optimize it. The challenge is, especially if you're running short-term strategies and short-term campaigns, there's not enough data for Pinterest to do this effectively. And because we're not using like a drive to a Shopify store with real tracking so I know what the actual sales are, it's harder for them to distribute the budget. So generally speaking, I'll select the custom. If this is your first time, you're confused, you don't want to get cute, totally fine to leave it as automatic bid placement and let Pinterest do the work. You don't need to do custom. However, if you want to do custom, you can go as low as 10 cents a click and then up from there, whatever you want. I think it pre-populates around 22 cents like it is here, uh, but you can kind of test this. If you want to kind of just go low the first couple days and see if you get enough impressions, you may want to trim that down to 10 to 15 cents. Or you can kind of come out at like 25 to 50 cents and just let it run from there. Totally up to you, but you can totally do a custom setting here. And then I, if I do do custom, I, I keep it at the standard. Frankly, I don't know between accelerated and standard what the difference is. So again, I know a little bit about Pinterest ads, enough to be dangerous, but I'm not an expert, so I just leave that as is. And then you just want to create, uh, select the pin that you want to promote. Um, it'll also give you this, the chance to set up an ad so you could you know, create your pin from scratch that you want to promote. But if you've created some pins and you already have it in here, you would just select it. In this case, it's empty because it's a blank account, but you would just select it. And then once your pin gets promoted, again, for keyword specific things or interest specific things, it's going to show up like this. So it's going to be a, a, an organic pin. It's going to look super organic. The only difference is if you see down here, it says promoted pin. Same down here, promoted pin and promoted pin. This, everything else on here, the comments, the loves, the pins, the brand, the photo, the headline, 
all that stuff is going to stay the exact same even if you're not running Pinterest ads. So if you kind of get some interest in this and you get the ad spikes some interest and the keywords start to get searched for, this pin will live on in perpetuity. So it's kind of cool. And it's also super organic. Like it doesn't really feel like an ad when you're in here on your phone, on mobile, or on desktop, kind of just scrolling Pinterest. So I think that's a good thing. Pro tips. Video works fantastically, right? So you can see here that the, the setup was super simple. It took us, what, like 10 minutes? You can create some simple video uh, pins as well. Again, within the Canva platform, you can do uh, templates that you can just plug in a simple video that you can shoot. Uh, even just like a, a scroll of pictures you could even plug in there. Super easy to set up, but really, really effective because as you're scrolling Pinterest as a user, there's not a whole lot of videos. There's not a whole lot of motion. So you can get a really big click-through rate, drive your cost per click down, and drive your traffic and ultimately sales up when you use video. So I definitely recommend that if you get a little bit of time and some video assets that you can use. You can also optimize bids with experience, so you can kind of keep it simple to start, but if you want to get sophisticated and kind of dial your bid strategy in, much like Amazon, you can definitely do that to optimize your financials. Also, as people visit your pins organically and visit your brand on Pinterest, you can create audiences and retarget them, and they can be quite effective, uh, especially if you've got, say, a, a multiple launches you've done, you built up your presence on Pinterest, a new launch is coming up, you can re-promote those to people that have already engaged with content on your Pinterest page, which I think is cool. You can also retarget customers, so if you've got an email list for your brand, if you've got other contact information for your customers, you can upload that to Pinterest and have them targeted within the Pinterest platform should they ever visit it um, uh, from the email that you provide or information you provide. You can also do the equivalent of lookalike audiences. So you can take existing email lists and say, hey, find Pinterest, find me people like this because these are customers that have bought my product in Amazon or Shopify. So that can be really powerful. Create how-to niche content and plug in your product and brand as a solution to that. A lot of people type in how-to oriented stuff or tips for or DIY oriented stuff. Tap into people seeking out that information and inject your brand and products using pins and cool content within Pinterest to supersede that and even promote that content using ads. Strong visuals matter. I mentioned this at the outset. Make sure that you're not putting up crappy photos because you're probably going to get crappy results and it's not going to work. You might as well save your time. Use really cool stunning imagery, which you should have in your Amazon brand to begin with, but have that be a focus of your Pinterest strategy and your Pinterest ad strategy. And then you might want to do some like external content on your Shopify blog page as an example and do something like 10 amazing gifts for gardeners and then drive them and then have your whole catalog as options that they can click through. So you can do deeper level content meeting Pinterest users with solutions and your product as solutions. That's more than just, hey, click on this and go to my ad. So as you get more sophisticated, you can develop this kind of content out as part of your strategy with Pinterest. Also, geo rank and geo conversion. So you might have a product, let's say that you're selling a stand-up paddleboard and it is December or it is January or February, whatever the case is. Targeting Sally Sue in North Dakota in the middle of winter for a supboard isn't going to work. But if it's Karen in California or Fred in Florida or Tim in Texas, Man, they might be in the market in January, February because they live in a nice climate. So if you've got niche specific or weather specific or geo specific audiences that fluctuate throughout the year, you can deselect certain states or select certain states as you need to to promote your pins to the right audience at the right moment in time. I definitely recommend this, especially if you've got a seasonally based product where you can tap in in those low seasons and capitalize on warmer or colder climates depending on what your product mix is. The other thing you can do is looking at geo rank. So say uh, you're looking at geo rank within Amazon and there's certain states that you're kind of floundering on. You can beef those states up and drive additional traffic, views, and sales to help spike the Amazon algorithm from a geo standpoint. You can also find out where your product best converts and which customers from which states buy your products typically. So I like to use the Sellerize app. You guys know I'm a massive, massive fan. Link down below, Coffee Money, or you could go directly to sellerize.com if you want to be a jerk and not give me any commission for it. Um, I'm not getting rich. It's like, I don't know, 20% of your plan or whatever if you guys end up keeping with a, a plan. 
Um, but this is a cool tool. If you click on a product within Sellerize, it will show you a heat map of where most of your orders came from. So for this one product uh, from July 1st to September 28th, I had 1,381 sales. This is one of the products I've done a deep dive case study on for launch. You'll see here California, Texas, and Florida, and a little bit of New York, and it looks like a little bit of Vermont and Illinois get more sales. So I might know like, hey, this product suits people in California, Texas, and Florida, or my brand suits people in California, Texas, and Florida. Let's target those. So you can do some really cool geo-targeting stuff within the platform as well, which can be pretty powerful. So how do you track this stuff? Admittedly, this is one of the drawbacks. I kind of mentioned the cons. It's difficult with external traffic to Amazon in current state to attribute sales and figure out where effective spend is happening. You can just see directionally in the impact of rank and other things with your listing, but we'll get through three things you can do a little bit here. First is Amazon attribution. I've been using it for about six months and I've got invited to a new beta. So I know uh, definitively that this team within Amazon, the ads team is looking um, and working hard on solutions to arm Amazon sellers so that they can spend money on external traffic and see what converts on the Amazon platform. It's just, it's wonky. It's complicated. I would give you a migraine headache if I like, kind of dove into it and it would probably be 60% right. So at this point, um, at the shooting of this video, I wouldn't recommend Amazon attribution. However, as soon as it is, I will drop a link in the description below on how to use Amazon attribution. It's one way to track it today. I just wouldn't recommend um, burning your brain cells on it because it's probably a fruitless effort until it gets more sophisticated. What you can do, however, is, is take some of the data within the Pinterest platform. When you first kind of turn this ad on, you're going to see no data here. It'll have no activity. But over time, as you launch campaigns and start to get visits and spend on your promoted pins, you'll get a view similar to this. So this is going to show the ad group name, ad name, the pin description, pin URL, all this stuff, whether it's on or off. Show you the spend. It'll show you the cost per result and it'll show impressions, clicks, all that stuff. So you can definitely track directionally, hey, how many people are seeing this ad, how many people are clicking on it, and the people that click on it, that will give you a pretty good idea on how many people are visiting your Amazon listing. And then you can make some assumptions about conversion rate on what you expect those to be. The other way to do it, um, especially if you're doing some A-B type testing, this is a recent launch for my home good brand that I will get into here probably in the next month and show you guys how it went. Had to troubleshoot some stuff, so uh, subscribe if you haven't because there'll be some interesting nuggets on how to work through a troublesome launch the first couple days. Um, but this is one where we basically shut some stuff off. Uh, I just wanted to see and throttle pure Pinterest ads and see what happened. And you can see here where we turn it on and then the rank jumped back up and held steady. So this stuff, directionally speaking, can be used uh, to track keyword volume as well. That is it, guys. Pinterest ads, the nitty-gritty tutorial, the know-enough-to-be-dangerous tutorial, the step-by-step -step approach that hopefully today you can launch this stuff because it works. Amazon loves it. It's not too difficult to set up. And it is super, super powerful and a thing that most Amazon sellers are not doing. So set yourself apart, be an elite seller, do those itty bitty little things right, which is oftentimes the difference maker between somebody that does okay or that fails on Amazon to somebody that thrives, that does six, seven, eight figures plus on Amazon. These are the little tricks that will get you there. Guys, I'm going to start a new series. Um, it's going to be Mental Game Mondays. So I'm going to get into some of the mental game elements of Amazon. It's going to be a new series I'm going to drop uh, on most Mondays. So stick around for that next Monday. It'll be the first one. And then we're also going to serve up a YouTube's external ad strategy. Probably the most complex, but also I think one of the most untapped and really, really cool things that you can do to drive sales rank and benefit to your Amazon business. So stick around next week, guys. A lot coming your way. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you're doing well. Cheers.